that started 20 years ago when we were in high school. We will be talking all things life, love, family, and anything and everything else under the sun. Delve deeper with us, because in life, you know, Jeanne, my layers. Yeah. Layers. Stack, do stack. <laughs> How are you, my love, since we last spoke? I'm doing all right. I'm doing me good. Like, I think so. You know, I'm good. <laughs> and how are, are you? you? Are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I was actually sipping on some grape ties. I know tea today. I'm so missing jealous. Home. I'm missing so home. jealous. Like, I miss. <laughs> I didn't tell you. I found, um, what do they call it? This kale? You know, they call it kale in the... Mm, in the kale. Mm. But I know it as rape. I think it's rape. Yeah, 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 yeah I think it's rape, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or fogo. Oh, or fogo, or whatever it is. I found in the shop uh, at the grocery store the other day, and I was like, mm. bitch! <laughs> bitch! Yeah. Oh. I do There's nothing that beats finding something from home when you're yeah. like not expecting it or like <laughs> you like want to buy the whole store. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. But man, I'm a long way from home. Like you feel it. Um, but yeah, that's t- bringing us actually right into the topic for today. Um, you know, talking mm-hmm. about things that I, I don't think people actually talk about it often enough or you do in your private circles, but it's kind of no one often shares how it goes. It's just like, oh, that's how it goes, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, There's no like tidbit side. Or, that's yes. actually quite a plug. We need to look for someone to do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> a how to. A how, a how, how to. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's so many variables. And what we're talking about, before I forget, is surviving diaspora, talking about citizenships and visas, settling in the whole process. Um, that goes in. green bomba, green yeah, bomba. with the green bomba, like moving um, um, from Zim to another country. Um, as many of you know, like the Zimbabwean economy, a lot of people are, I guess, economic refugees. You could call it that, or economic migrants. Certainly. I don't know if, if that's what you call it, um, because of the state of our economy and a huge population is all over the world. You know, trying to make a living, trying to make. Mm-hmm. Uh, a dollar out of 15 cents okay i don't know why i thought of that analogy yeah. but, okay. <laughs> it's it's true though we are yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that 15 cents back home <laughs> exactly <laughs> world remit <laughs> money <laughs> grab world <laughs> remit <laughs> western <laughs> union they be mm, they thrive they be off, of the hustle anyway yeah. but before we get into all that <laughs> you know um could you maybe like share a bit of your journey of leaving zim until now and that whole process when it comes to visas for you how was that you know when did you leave girl do you are you giving me the whole episode here yeah i'm joking clip clip notes (laughs) well obviously so we were talking about how to find a place that does like how to and there are a few well there were a few yeah uh when we were looking to which universities to go to it was mm-hmm. just obvious that we were gonna have to be going outside the country mm-hmm. um so it was more a choice of where your parents could afford yep. or where your parents thought you know they should send you mm-hmm. um or allow you to go to so you'd always have to have that awkward chat maybe like fifth form sixth form yes about where you see if you had siblings sometimes they already had paved the way for where you're also going to go mm-hmm. um 
also it just depends on the setup that you had with your family but for me personally I spoke to my dad and um at the time there was a huge drive to come to Australia Mm -hmm. um they had like two places consulting agencies um, Mm -hmm. McPherson and Koala um and you could choose and they would help you like literally these unis would pay these consulting agencies to look for international students to come mm. over mm-hmm. um so that's how I got interested in Australia and then obviously finding the right degree and all of that so first of all student visa obviously to yeah. get out of Zoom. Mm-hmm. um and then once once you're here that has its own implications and its own standards you have to like obviously maintain going to school you can't be a student who's not studying mm-hmm. um paying all the fees you come here you realize you pay like four or five times as much as australians yep. so yep. it's like oh okay so i'm paying for y'all to come to school mm-hmm. that's what's happening <laughs> yeah exactly um, that's real. you pretty much have zero rights on a student visa you can work but only like very minimally i think at the time and i think it still is it's 20 hours a week which really if you look at a week with seven days in the week that's like mm-hmm. under three hours a day mm-hmm. which is nothing um so a lot of students end up working saturday and sunday and they pretty much do maybe in one day during the week pretty much do their 20 hour quota mm. um and then this is to supplement obviously living expenses so there's that and then when you get off that visa, that's when it starts to get tricky. So yes. once you graduate, what you going to do? So mm-hmm. you're already thinking in your last year of, of school, you're already thinking what next? So some people go down the pathway of sponsorship visas. So mm-hmm. you can get a job and your job will sponsor you. Mm-hmm. Um, some people go the path of just being on a work visa. That's just like, I'm here, I'm going to look for a job. But to be doing that kind of visa, then you have to have a job that's on a list. So Australia will like yes. produce a list yes. of approved mm-hmm. um approved professionals that they want that they're lacking in they they feel based on the census or whatever yeah. are lacking so a lot of people did accounting in Zim. like you meet a lot of zimbabweans who did accounting mm-hmm. and if you ask them why a lot of them are like well it was on the list mm-hmm. like because it was, it was mm-hmm. a time when they wanted a lot of accountants mm-hmm. so that's that was the avenue i used so silly because back then it was done like on a point form so you know being in australia for however many years from the student visa you'd get some points and then being like speaking english you get another point like just mm. things like that until you got to the point threshold and then you could apply like if you had enough points you then apply yeah and then you go like i went to like on a bridging one after that um and then once you're on the bridge, you're kind of waiting for them to make a decision, which is very nerve wracking because yeah. you're like, mm-hmm. am I here forever? Am I not? Mm. And then once they approve, after a certain amount of time, you go on what they call like a, you can apply for permanent residency. Mm-hmm. And once you apply for that, which is a whole nother mm-hmm. <laughs> set of regulations, then you apply for, um, you could then apply for citizenship, mm-hmm. which is then what I did. And then here we are. Mm. So a whole lot of like steps yes. to get to where we are. And then you become Australian and then you completely forget about the whole hassle of everything you've ever yeah. been Yeah, yeah. It was, um, I mean, I sounded so cavalier talking about it, but it was actually it's a no hard labor. The, yeah, it's no walk in no, the No, hard labor, a lot of hard work, a lot of putting money away, mm-hmm. a lot of paying for things. Like mm-hmm. even they make you do an English IELTS test, mm. IELTS, whatever they call it, test. And then it's like, you know, you speak good English. You know, you write good English. Yes. You know, you can but listen. But you still got to prove. But mm. you still got to prove mm. it. You still got to do it. You know, you do medical exams. You pay like four, five hundred dollars for a doctor, and all he does is like check your blood pressure or something. He's <laughs> an approved visa plus yeah. a doctor. You know, so it's like a lot of just every step of the way, all yeah. their expenses and That's the waiting times and. It's like you live your life in limbo mm-hmm. until your visa comes out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then in limbo again, because I think you're already thinking of the next one. When you're on the one, you already just got. Absolutely. So, it never, and there's never really truly like a coast. Insane, moment. insane. Mm-hmm. A lot of, mm-hmm. a lot of friends left because the process was just too complicated and hard. Mm-hmm. A lot of people gave up. They just thought, you know what, better I be home, mm-hmm. which I completely understand as well. Mm-hmm. It's not for everyone. Mm. Um, there's a lot of sacrifices that I made like I personally missed out on my brother's wedding my oldest mm. brother's wedding 
because at that time when you handed in your application you weren't allowed to travel Mm -hmm. you've just said to australia i love your country i want to stay so they're like well where you want to go boo so whilst your visa was Mm. being processed you couldn't travel Mm. so it's heartbreaking because then you're like uh you know but then at the same time what do you do Mm, that's true i mean what about you how was your journey my journey is like twofold right because Mm. you know i studied in south africa um Mm -hmm. just like you said similarly you thought about which other places to go or yes i did and then it was like well you're going to you know south africa my sister was Mm -hmm. there um, mm. so I studied an SA student visa and you have to renew your student visa I think it was every two years at the time I was studying um, and then you, my visa was tied to my studies and when my time was up then I look I went back home looked for a job got a job and then you obviously have to get the work visa and all that and that's a long process paying for people to like uh, for legal support through through that process uh, similarly south africa has a lot of like restrictions on which jobs are like skilled highly high on demand um, and my profession was not deemed as like in demand at the time so it made things even harder um, and typically what you should be able to do after five years is apply for residency um, mm-hmm. but the, at the time when it was time to apply for residency for me, the restrictions got more restrictive in South Africa, more complicated. And also companies were not as willing to like, be like, okay, we want this person because their implications for companies, if they choose a non-South African. So yeah, that's the course. whole basic, similar here. Yeah. Basic breakdown. And then, so then I moved back home trying to decide where I'd go next. Um, And then the opportunity to come teach here came up um, and somebody was willing to, you know, vouch for me, offer the job, go through the, you know, the same thing, the hoops, Mm. the, all that for me. The many hoops. The (laughs) many hoops. And that process was like long and tedious, like, you know, red tape in the application process is just a real thing. And so you know, had to go to Zambia to do my applications because there's no longer a consulate for the Czech Republic in Zim. And even though I had worked in South Africa, I had been home. So they're like Zambia services, Zimbabwe, um, go through. Yeah. That's just, it's a long process. I won't bore you. And then came here and they give you two year visa after two years up are up, you apply for a new visa also tied to your work um, yeah so it's like a work visa work visa um and that's a summary i'm really just breaking it down in its simplest form because yeah you have to because we all know <laughs> it's, it's long really, like tds you have to set money aside you need you know that legal support even more so like here because i don't speak the language um and that it's time consuming so to be like to your employer yeah i'm going away for you know i need to do this it's just not feasible um so yeah there's all that it's 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 a journey let me put it that way there's, it doesn't stop mm. did you have to get your stuff translated Rumbi? because yes. obviously being the czech yes. republic officially has, officially can't just translate trans- with anybody yes you have to translate and it needs to be like verified or they like yeah it has to be officially like and that's all your cvs your applications all that kind of thing has to be done um and even when you went, when I went to the consulate, there was like one or two documents that they required that I had on hand that were not, I think it was even like a paragraph or something and they had to translate and you pay on top of that. And, and, and so, yeah, it was, it was yeah, a lot. That, I think that would be the challenge with moving yes. to a country that doesn't yes, speak. That's English. not English speaking. That's a first language. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, for me, it was so weird to like sit down for a citizenship test. Yes. and pledge allegiance to yes. a new country yes. um and any listeners listening in who've had to do that can you relate like singing a national anthem from another country and like you know hand over heart you know mm-hmm. i'm now australian like it's mm-hmm. weird right because mm-hmm. it's like a lot of times we do these things for access we don't necessarily do it i'm not pledge and like okay please if there's any like um officers listening in i I do pledge my allegiance (laughs) 
I, I am Australian. Uh, please don't revoke my citizenship. But hey, oh, I take a podcast. Yeah, uh, you might not always mean it. You might not always mean. Yeah, uh, no, no. you know, it's just one of those things you just have to go through. And then that decision, like I have quite a few friends who stayed on the permanent residency for a long time because they couldn't make that jump, right? Mm. Like, and Zimbabwe, similarly South Africa, and probably similarly... You can't have dual citizenship. Yeah, so there's a lot of different... Actually, Zim changes. Mm. Some years you can't... Well, some years, sometimes it depends on the custom officer who's there mm-hmm. when you land. So it's like... And that's what I was about to get into. Like, it's just so different. If each country is different. Uh, my husband's German, and he's on a permanent residency. He's not even mm-hmm. Australian. Uh, because he's like... It's a whole thing to go through to revoke your german citizenship mm. um he yeah. pretty much that he might have to then abdicate being german which he doesn't want to do because he's like oh actually on a german passport you get to travel to more countries for free oh, like, my, my yeah. husband has looked this up but like this is how a passport becomes like a token that you can use for further like just for further avenues to open for mm, you, mm-hmm, you, know, you for might sure. not pl- pledge allegiance to this place that you have a passport for, but you know the doors it will open for open you unfairly. But for that's sure. the way our world works. Works, yes, you know? definitely, definitely. And I think you know one of the things too in terms of the challenges you face, like living in the diaspora. It's like, for instance, when I moved, <laughs> traveling here at the airport, I mean, aside from the visa process, back and forth, all that, I remember having to raise the money for me to get here and to to live here. And shout out to all the listeners who helped me with my, it it wasn't GoFund, but it's like a GoFund. uh, What's the word for those things? What do you call that? Um, Crowdfunding. Crowdfunding. (laughs) the word but like who supported me because I wouldn't have been here without you because you know you need to be able to sustain yourself and prove that you can um before coming um thankfully with a work visa because they know I'm going to work they know then obviously I'll get paid but you know you get paid but the initial costs the initial costs um and then when I was traveling here I remember um in South Africa, because I bussed from Zim to SA, this was pre-COVID and that was a whole other situation. And at, in South Africa, when I was uh, boarding the plane or waiting to board, they come around and check your passports, check your visas. They saw mine was a Zimbabwean visa and it, it was showing that I had, um, it was an entry visa for work access in the Czech Republic. Didn't believe me. I have to take your passport. I have to, you know, uh, verify something and she just took it and a it's like you don't just take someone's passport you need to be like come with me or you know like so she took it and she that looked down like who are you and how are you getting to where are go you going and live and work here I remember the stank eyes I got I flew through Dubai same situation I remember I was like at close to the front of the line for boarding and this man was like ma'am, you're going to have to wait and sit down. We need to verify something on your um, passport. What? And I was just like looking like a criminal, you know, and then they had to do their checks. Um, and I think the, the consulate had printed like it was a bit faded. So I think, mm, I mean, girl, I think that. Yes. So now it looked like, I don't know, I got some somebody to make photocopy (laughs) photocopy it so then they had sorry ma'am you're gonna have to sit and they don't do discreet eh like of course not they embarrass Uh, you they embarrass you like you need to sit down and I remember I sat down I was like oh my goodness and then they checked something then after everybody else had boarded they come back like sorry ma'am okay so you're good to go apologize for making you wait I was like I wish you could say that in front of everybody who now thinks I'm some yeah and now when you're last on the plane everybody giving you the eye exactly Um, so there's that. And of course, you know, certain things you have to give up, you know, like, you know, you're still trying to establish yourself. You don't have the backing of like, um, money from parents. So, you know, missing friends, uh, I missed friends, weddings back home. I haven't seen my family in two odd years now because then COVID came, um, because you're saving and all that. So building your life up from the ground up because you're dependent on only you like what are some of the things like 
people don't really say when it comes to being in the diaspora and starting a life for you that yeah. or that whole notion of they expect you to when you land home you have all this money but the the backstory of what it takes to actually live yeah what yeah it's crazy because mm. even like um you just talked about your passport um sorry your visa fading mm. my passport was fading mm. <laughs> which is even worse because mm. they were like i remember the first time i went to zim mm. 2008 they were like Going out was fine. Australia don't care if you're leaving. They're like, like boo, yo, boo. <laughs> go wherever you need to be going, boo. But when you're coming back, when you're coming back into that country, yo, 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 nothing beats. And I've traveled a lot. Nothing beats Australian custom. I've heard <laughs> of Australian people custom. People yeah, don't play. They don't play. They will open up your wig and investigate inside if they need to. Like, they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> they will unravel it. <laughs> like Savage. they will look at the bottom of your shoe, like to see mm. if there's like mud or like it's it can be bad. Mm. It can be really bad. Mm. So anyway, when I was coming back, my first time I ever went home, coming back, you know, yeah, uh, really happy to have been home, coming back, feeling refreshed, and then they're looking at my passport. They're like, "This is not you. Did you get a nose job? Did you do this? Did you like all these Wild. questions?" I, wild like, and i can see what they meant like somehow it looked like my passport photo mm. this wasn't as defined anymore it looked like it had been like put under light or whatever yes, but like my photo getting lighter and lighter and lighter mm. mm -hmm. so like to be honest in like when i started applying for permanent residency and stuff i actually stopped traveling for a bit because mm. i just i just didn't want the hassle yes. of like having to explain because i knew like i would have to go to airports way before everyone else because i knew yes. my passport was an issue at the same time i knew i couldn't just i even thought of just saying to zim people my passport got stolen and getting a new one but at that time it was like 2008 2009 when things were tough terrible and mm. just before they reintroduced the australian yes. i mean the u.s dollar, US dollar. Mm -hmm. so like things were not on the shelves there was not, like there was just people were barely surviving no other like, priorities still, at that point uh, people did, yeah so i was just like okay i just will have to just put up with this and i did a lot of local mm. um travel, travel domestic travel because i was like well I'm definitely not leaving until like my passport's been swapped. Yeah. But like, it's just, there's so many nuances mm -hmm. to move another country that people don't give people who move credit for. Mm -hmm. Unless you're doing a soft landing and someone's waiting there with big hugs and set up everything for, for you. For you, yep. It yep. really is the most loneliest time you can have. Like yep. I landed, I even to get a work visa, they hadn't said, the student visa you're on, you have to pay extra then to get the work conditions put mm -hmm. on there. Mm -hmm. They hadn't said that. And then back in those days, you had to pay using a credit card. And back mm -hmm. in those days, you couldn't just get a credit card. Of course. Or a debit Standard. card. So mm -hmm. like, you know, here I am begging like my Canadian friend who she also wanted to work and her parents were going to pay using mm -hmm. their card, credit card. So I had to give her, like she did the transaction form her and for myself. Mm -hmm. And then I paid, I paid my my bid to her in mm -hmm. Aussie dollars but it's like that that hustle right that thinking you, outside the yes, box yes yes mm -hmm. that oh yeah and then you're trying to like not make yourself look like the poor little African mm -hmm. so it's like you're <laughs> you're like balancing all these things you know you're trying to be clever about things but at the same time you learning as you go so you're bound to make financial mistakes you're yep. bound to make admin mistakes you've yep. never done this stuff yeah. before yeah. right and you expect her to just know no, you know no. finding a place to live finding good housemates oh. finding grocery shopping find like getting you know when people steal from you find dealing with that like it's just if i it's, tell you it's like adulting on steroids when it you move hits you home. in the face it's really like your, the first year of me being because in essay when I moved to SA, I had my sister at least. So I had that like support, you know, even though like I was fumbling to discover myself in work, I had my sister, family, friends, you know, through university and all that. Moving here to a country where I knew nobody here in a place where I knew nobody, language is different, systems are different. Like it was the most isolating as you said lonely 
experience ever. I was constantly anxious, constantly stressed because you try to make sure you dot all your I's and cross all your T's. Like you literally have, you know, and trying to figure it out. But somehow, I don't know how you do it. I think it's just like, you know, sink or swim, buddy. Like you need to yeah. get yeah. on with it, you know? And I remember yeah. having, we had countless conversations and you would say to me, Amanda, like, it's, it's just the journey. This It's, it's going to be okay. It's just the journey. And at that point, you know, I'm so grateful that travel in Europe is so affordable because I had friends come to see me. I was able to see them. I was able to go to Germany, which is next door, Hamburg, for Amanda's engagement party. Um, yeah. And then my sister came to visit. And I think those are the things that sustained me at the time, yeah. 2019, because it is wildly, you cannot explain it. And there's just so many variables um, to that. So we've obviously like, talked a lot about like the struggle, the hustle, and feel free to ask us questions, you know, in, you know, in our DMs and comments, we could go on, but all to say, there's a, a kind of knowing when you're in the diaspora to someone else who's in the diaspora, you just know, it's like an understanding, like, I know what you've been yeah. through. Yeah, I know and what the costs had, involved. The costs, <laughs> the hoops you've had to jump to get where yeah. you are. So that's why, you know, mad respect for everyone who who's done it who's doing it um but what are some of the advantages i feel like we don't want it to sound like hey yeah, i know <laughs> but like why why do people do this and what are the advantages that then come with it that people stick it out and push through yeah well it's kind of like a, in terms of advantages you kind of have to make it as you want it to be because there's mm-hmm. no there's no real going back Yes. Um, when it comes to Zim, mm. there's, as you said in a previous episode, there's like 99 plus percent unemployment. Yeah. So it's not like you're going to go back and just, you know, and a lot of us are doing degrees and fields that might not even exist in uh, Zim, fully yeah. in yeah. Zim yet. Yeah. Uh, like, for example, I did forensic toxicology. Yeah. Unless yeah. I want to be in the therapy. Uh, I don't know if the therapy is hiring, but if they are, <laughs> I don't like know if they're hiring me, boo. <laughs> So I don't know if I'll be doing forensics in Zim, yeah. but like, yeah. it's just that whole notion of the freedom it affords you, right? Mm. To choose which career path you want to do, what you want to do with your life, what hobbies you like to do, mm. you know, you can fully realize who you are. And mm. through all those challenges we just talked about and highlighted, you get to know yourself quick, fast. There's no 100%. other way. Mm. And you know who is really, truly riding and dying for you because they will have to, they will have to also help you. Can so your I friends say, come to the forefront. Can I just say, it shows you who's who in your life. Like if I yeah, can tell you sure. that experience, because when people say when things are good, it's easy to be have friends. They don't they don't lie. Like yeah. they they yeah. tell no lie. But when things are tough, and you know, I was fortunate as I was saying with the crowdfunding, the love and support I got was like really something amazing. Um, and then the adjustment process too shows you who's really there for you because yeah, it gets quiet. Let me put it that way. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, for sure. Completely, completely understand. And even here, like, even though we are all on the same trajectory, all trying to get the visa or whatever, yes. people can also fall, make you fall by the wayside. You know, maybe mm. not give you good advice, mm. maybe not like the people who've come before you, who've done it before, maybe quite mum. Like, there's something super odd about Zimbabweans yes. and sharing visa info. Yes. Or like sometimes we'll be, ask you straight up, what visa are you on? And you're like, uh, yes. I just met you. <laughs> I kind of just met you. So, <laughs> do I know you? So, yeah, it's a weird thing yeah, where it's like sure. something we've we've made into the secretive. Yeah. Then also, there's some people who've sought political asylum. There's those mm. kind of visas as well, mm-hmm. where yeah, I'm Zimbabwean, but if I go back home, I'll be in trouble. Mm-hmm. So you know, I'm staying in your country forever. So then it's also hard because you're balancing. You people don't know people land. Yeah. Um. So people don't want to ask too many inquisitive questions. Yes. It's almost like. You hear, I mean, I've got friends who got deported. So obviously mm. they had done something wrong along the process and mm. or they had overstayed their welcome. Mm. Uh, some people deferred their uni, like they didn't actually want to finish their uni or maybe 
for a year or two, they wanted to work to make the money to then to finish, finish yeah. the uni. So mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. like you start to all talk about it less and less because yes. people's situations can be so varied. Yes. Um, some people get visas, you know, through marriages. That's mm-hmm. also a thing mm-hmm. you, know, you find love or mm-hmm. and then your Australian partner helps you, yeah, you know, yeah. so and then the judgment that comes with that, like, yep. oh, you just with him for love or are you yeah. with him for money Ugh, we're with wow. for love some people have kids you know mm. in these countries and then when they're pregnant hey you gotta stay you know so mm. it, it just becomes and there's like i feel like it should just be a no judgment zone mm. because people are doing what they can to, to survive be where they want yeah to survive to gain that independence yeah. which is a huge advantage yeah to stand yeah. on your own two feet your own little mm. thing mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah it's I agree. It's very layered. And I think, you know, one of the things that like someone can ask, and I remember I had these conversations with myself too, is like, why would you start afresh? Because anyone who knows starting afresh, it's started from the bottom, like you're starting from the bottom mm. and building and you're no, I'm nobody in this world I'm in. Um, I like starting afresh in all aspects. And I remember having this conversation with myself, like, why would you want to put yourself, you know, you know, even further behind your peers? Because we all think about these things, right? Like, where am I? How, how am I? And especially you what know, such and such is doing in our, in our society and community. That was a big thing. It's just like, oh, just do this. So-and-so is doing this. You should do this. You should, why just stay here, do this, you know? And, and for me to actively choose to move against the grain and come start afresh in a field that, to be honest, like, where I come from, it was like, why would you go and do that, right? It took a lot, but I think for me, the independence was a huge thing and I needed space to be and think and be myself. And I think that's meant more for me than anything else, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Um, it, it, it explains why I chose and I still choose to is because I needed that. Um, I needed to to understand myself and know what I wanted for myself. And so would I do it again? hundred percent. I would do it all over again because I knew what it meant for me aside from, you know, the, 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 the physical and tangible reasons we speak of, you know, economically and all that. It's also just like what it is for me. Um, and, and kudos to you, Rumbi, like really m- much kudos to you for starting you. again. Mm. Uh, especially when you had kind of already started an essay yes. yeah then it's like you start it's like oh i start again as if i'm yeah. 19 20 or whatever and yes. it's you know so you still took that chance for yourself and mm. that's something i think a lot of people who do decide to stay at home or mm. who go back home kind of re- kind of forget how tough it can be yeah. and they just think living this grand life yes of course we're so grateful there's like electricity there's yes. running water there's yes. there's the basic necessities of yeah. course but it can be psychologically and emotionally yeah. it can be very very taxing you mm-hmm. know i even speak to people who've got kids outside mm-hmm. of um of zim and mm-hmm. there's zimbabwean and they're like i always imagine like the way i grew up and how different it yes. is now when i'm raising my own child you know because it's very lonely mm-hmm. you know my dad always laughs he's like ah life in diaspora diy do it mm-hmm. yourself oh yes because it is it is diy thousand percent you, know? thousand you put percent. your own fuel in yes. you clean your own damn house you yes. do your own laundry nobody be helping you and yes yeah. of course you can Maybe we're speaking from a privileged space because in Zim, but nah, in mm-hmm. Zim, even if you live in wherever you live, you've got someone helping you, whether it's a relative or a paid yes. helper, there is always someone Some to help. lend a hand. Mm-hmm. Or if you're struggling, you, you can just say, call so ah, and so. Mm-hmm. Such and such. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, it's like li- literally my next door neighbor could be suffering or unemployed, and I would have no idea. Mm-hmm. Whereas in Zim, there's that community, you all mm-hmm. band together, mm-hmm. you all, and it has its drawbacks, of course, as we've talked about in the family yes. episode. Yes. With Ubuntu and everything. Yeah. But at the when it comes to living in diaspora, it's very solitary. If you don't make good friends and uh, make them so quick, rap, or if you don't rap. have family already living with you, mm. it's you pretty much can be like close to suicidal because mm, it's that mm-hmm. deep. Like a lot mm-hmm. of people have had lots of mental issues yeah. when they leave 
because first of all in most of these countries you don't belong you're not the right color yeah not the right class you're not the right whatever it is mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're an other and then to face that every single every day, day and not have a space to breathe mm. oh gosh yeah, Girl, it's, a lot. it's a lot it's it's a lot and honestly it's and then <laughs> Then COVID. Hey! <laughs> COVID! COVID came in hot. It was like, no. okay, yeah. So it's, it's a lot. This but panoramic honestly, life of ours. Ah, this Panasonic. I heard Panasonic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving all these different times. The parallelograms. Yeah, and- yeah. And peeps are all uh, too good, uh, too good. This pandemic has been something it's else. Something else. So no, honestly, it's one of those things you, you, it's, it builds a resilience in you. And yeah, I mean, it's, and for me, I've been asked, people have reached out to me. How do I do this? How do I like the process? Like, you know, you know, and I've spoken to a number of people because I'm really of the mindset I, I should share because man to go through to navigate alone is so hard um and what i can say about the process of relocating is you really need to want it like you can't be like oh it's too difficult or oh like you know amanda will know like i was chicken bussing from zim to zambia hustling like doing like all sorts of i had to go to essay i had like you're jumping all these hoops you need to put your ego aside and really just yeah. be like, do I want it or not? Nah? Like that's yeah, yeah. bottom line. And yeah. you have to be, you know, someone really cooperative, make it easy. If it's a work visa, make it easy for your employer as easy as possible. Like there's so many things you have to just really yeah. take on your shoulders and willing to do it because it, you know what even the jobs the casual jobs we have to do to supplement you know Mm -hmm. like i i throughout my uni career waitressing or cleaning cleaning hotel rooms because it's like and then people will be like what you're doing what because obviously as we talked about in a previous Mm. episode about classism Mm. there's certain jobs that people don't expect you to do people here come and work in mcdonald's at hungry jacks drive ubers Mm. you know because you doing you know what you're doing it for yeah it's not forever it's mm. just a phase and mm. it will get you through and i mm. think uh, there's a lot of humility when you move as yes. well because in zim uh, depending for most people you're afforded a certain type of lifestyle yes you know, and you get used to certain things we're just talking about maids and gardeners mm. and mm. you know and then when you come here you're like oh yeah it is everything is mm-hmm. you it's on your shoulder even so. packing your fruit like i don't know what it's like oh. in Australia. you have to weigh and pack your fruit yes. like yourself yeah. mm-hmm. ain't nobody saying yeah. you. Tipe, nobody yeah, no, no, no. there to weigh no. for you no. your food no. like things like that like i think people don't realize no. it's so diy to the to the to the putting thing. fuel in your car you're like Bruh. standing there <laughs> yeah so I remember the first time I was like, how do you even do this? <laughs> like, yes. You, know, you just pull up and then you're like, this is our fuel. Yes, first exactly. Time. Exactly. So, you put fuel in my car, you know? No, so, for sure. But all to say, y- you need to know for yourself what what you want and if you're willing to go all the way and the process. And, you know, it's, it's getting more complex as time goes, as we know. Yeah. It's not as easy. Um, yeah. But... Yeah. And the options you have at hand, like, mm. can you move back? Home? Mm. How, what does that look like? Mm. You know, some people can, some people in a, in a space where they can and yeah. family will support or they, they worked in an industry that can relate to whatever is happening in Zim or wherever mm. they're from. Mm. And some people can't. And then you have to kind of like find that happy medium. medium and I yes. think only before COVID, people weren't too worried because they knew at a drop of a hat, they could travel home, as you said yes. before. Yes. Um, but now with COVID, but a lot of things at the forefront and some people lost their jobs during COVID. Yes. So it was also like, how do I support family and support mm. myself? Mm. For um, sure. For sure. So, yeah. yeah. Diaspora, it's not all, I know. It's, they think it's mm. yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not all rainbows and butterflies. That's for sure. No. And that's why I think sometimes when you go home, we get turned because <laughs> we're like thinking of all those other times you go to the hair salon and they can't do your hair oh my god you have to do your own hair or we're thinking of all those times when you you know things like fruit for example you know fruits and seeds that are not the same vegetables are not 
fresh you know so it's like you have to just when yeah. we get home, we go home and you, if you see people from diaspora being super happy and super, a lot let of it them. is just cathartic. Let, mm. them. let them. They just yeah. have that two weeks that they've been looking forward to for years. Yes. You know, you never know. Yeah. Um, that's just yeah. their time to, to, <laughs> to feel to human. Feel, to feel normal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. yeah. All right. Well, thank you. And I hope, you know, you garnered something from it. I mean, we could have been talking absolute rubbish, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Take it or leave it, right? Um, but our Zim shout out today, uh, before we go, is Chrissy Zimura. Um, and Amanda, could you share a little bit more about what she's doing and why we're shouting her out on our platform? And yeah, please. Take us away. Yeah, then. funny. I just brought up hair as one of the last things, but mm. Chrissy is um, a hairstylist mm-hmm. uh, based in Sydney. Uh, she came to my attention because she, during the Black Lives Matter movement last yes. year, she started uh, a petition that actually brought to the forefront this whole notion of how you can be a certified, tra- fully trained hairstylist within mm-hmm. Australia and not know how to do certain people's hair. Like, how mm-hmm. can you actually stand up there and say, I can do hair, but you you know there's a whole subset of people you can't that you do don't. hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was petitioning for um, all these Australian institutions that teach people how to become hairstylists to include how to do hair for black people. So Afro hair. Uh, Snaps, because Mm -hmm. it brought a lot of conversation to the forefront. Mm -hmm. You know, even when you do enter a black salon, are those girls trained, you know? Mm -hmm. When they bring your hair, uh, was that a mistake? Or did they they just, you know? Mm. So it's like all these questions became came up to the forefront you know not only for us within our community and training yes. but also when these spaces we're trying to occupy and these people you know who have salons is it actually a good idea to mm-hmm. make sure that everyone's fully trained mm-hmm. so shout out to her her instagram yes. is at chrissy zemura that's c h r i s y z e m u r a h a IR. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll obviously tag it in our episode as well. Mm-hmm. And you should definitely take a look. And if the petition's still open, have a sign. Um, mm-hmm. and let's push this forward because you can only make active change for at sure. these kind of levels. For sure. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening. As always, please let us know your thoughts. We are on Instagram at it's layered. You can email us, it's layeredpod at gmail.com. We'll put all the links down as well amanda it's always a pleasure doing this with i know you. love yeah. you so much yeah love <laughs> you too and we look forward to seeing you in our next episode I'm always bye always guys right. toodles be careful of those island boys